So, Natalie, you were saying that you are a foodie. I'm a huge foodie. And you are now in Bangkok. And Bangkok is famous for its street stall food, but that's changing. It is. So this is probably 70% of the reason why I moved to Bangkok because of the street food. So, yeah, the street food scene is changing. Um, it seems like they're trying uh, to take the model that's similar to the hawker centers in Singapore. So the hawker centers is basically where all of the street food carts that used to be on the corner of a street, what we call entire soy, um, they've been moved into one big center, so almost like a, like a deli center. Um, and I think it's in an effort to keep things clean, um, and to just have a hub where you get all of your food and, you know, it's easier for tourists. Um, so that's happening a lot. There are pockets of areas in Bangkok where you can still get amazing street food on the street, um, particularly in the business districts like Siloam. I think they will struggle to get their street food vendors off the streets because it is so convenient for people when they leave work. It's right near the elevated sky train that we talked about earlier. People can just grab some noodles, it's under a dollar, get the dinner, or perhaps they get the food to take away and then they go home. Um, and these places are always really busy. There's usually a line to get in one of these um, street food places. And they have little seats, little plastic chairs outside and, and little metal tables. So you can eat there, but it is on the street. Um, so there are areas now where you can get amazing street food, but it's not on the street anymore. It's in one of these small hawker-like centers. Yeah, that's too bad because I you know, ate street food going way back to you know, 25 years ago when I first moved here and it's just the best. Like it's, I never got sick eating street food for all my years. Uh, it's always clean and safe. And one of the things I really like about the street stall vendors that people don't talk about is that they're always really nice. And I, I have a theory about this. The people that own the street stalls, often that's their own small little business. So they're the one that's in control of it. And I think mentally they're just happier people rather than if you go in some, restaurant, the service can be quite poor yeah. because that person is, is kind of in servitude. They're not really yeah. in control of their little economic endeavor. So I love the street stall people because they're just so positive. Yeah, it does feel more entrepreneurial. Um, and these guys, something that I love about the street food as well, just while we're on the topic, is you walk down the street in Bangkok and there are all kinds of noises and there's all, there's color everywhere. All the cars, the taxis are super colorful. They're really famous for that. But then you will smell something, right? You will smell something being grilled or you'll smell som tum. So this is where they have the pestle and mortar and they're mixing up um, papaya and um, salad and garlic and the smell of fried garlic. I feel like every if, if you want to sell something, just blast the smell of fried garlic out. You will get people in. And that's one of the things that I love about the street food here. Um, and as you say, it is really cheap. And the thing is, is these people have most likely been preparing these, this food since the night before, right? So there is a huge misconception about street food being dirty. And obviously, there, of course, there are going to be places that have dirty street food and it may, might make you sick. But the chances are these people have been preparing these ingredients at home and then they've brought them onto their, their street food cart and they're selling them all day. So they really care about what they're selling. And people go back time and time again. And I can say that because I do. And I wouldn't go back if these people didn't make amazing food. Yeah, and if people were sick, right, then, then they would lose their business. Yeah. You know, it, it's almost illogical because when people think that, oh, the street food is, is dirty, you can see the kitchen. You literally are sitting next to the cook in the kitchen. You can see everything they're doing right in front of you, yeah. whereas in a restaurant, you have no idea what goes on in the kitchen. Yeah, so I can give you some advice for street food. Don't be scared of street food. Try it. But there are a couple of things that you can do to make it a little bit safer. So if you're getting something that's grilled – um, so we have something here called muping, which is pork, and it has a kind of like a, a, a sauce on the top of it. It's like coconut and spices. It's delicious. And you get it for like 10 baht. Um, put it, sometimes it will be sat out, and it might have been out for a while, so maybe you're worried about dirt on it or bacteria growing on it or flies getting on it, something like that. The grill is usually on the cart, so ask the street food vendor or just pick it up yourself and put it back on the grill. So that will, the flames will kill off any bacteria that's on there. So you put it on there for a couple of minutes, as long as you need to be happy. And then you can eat it and it will be, it'll be roasting hot, but you can be assured that there's nothing in it. And they often do that themselves. Yeah. Like, well, even if you don't ask, you'll, I always wondered if they'll like, oh, they'll just flop it back on there really, <laughs> really yeah. fast. Another thing that I love that they do in Thailand too, is if you go to, it's similar to the streets, 
the uh, food. It's the hole in the wall place where it literally it's a like a room with no door mm -hmm. and it's a bit kind of an outdoor restaurant. Yeah. And they have the hot water bucket and you dip your spoon and fork in yes. the hot water bucket. It's the most brilliant idea. Mm. It's not like something that almost restaurants should do. Yeah, you know what I mean? Genius. Yeah, I yeah. love that. It's like, okay, let's just sterilize it real fast. Yeah, so the idea is that the water is usually hot or boiling, so it will yeah. kill any bacteria that's on it. If you go to a street food place and perhaps they don't have that, but they do have like a table and chairs set up, when you get you get a box usually or like a rectangular metal box and that has your chopsticks in it or it has your spoon in it or your knife from uh, – we don't use knives in Thailand. It would be a spoon and a fork. Um, just use a napkin, wipe it down before you use it. They will have cleaned it before. Um, you know, I've never had any issue, but if you're not sure, just wipe it down with a napkin. There are always napkins. Yeah, oh, it's it's so clever. So I'm here with Natalie, and she is working in Bangkok. And how long have you been here? I've been here about 10 months. See, it's interesting to hear your thoughts on Bangkok because I was an English teacher here over 20 years ago from 1994 to 1998. It was my first teaching job and Bangkok was very different then mm. than it is now. Um, now I would say it's a pretty amazing cosmopolitan city. Could you agree? Yeah, it's part of the reason why we chose it. So um, my partner and I had traveled for about a year and a half and we said, okay, now let's live somewhere. So we decided to move to Bangkok because it has this great balance of you're still in Southeast Asia, so it still feels like um, it's developing. Um, it's on its way to something, perhaps what we see Japan or China as now, um, but it's not quite there yet. Um, and also that it can, you can get all the modern conveniences that you could possibly need here in this city. Um, it's really well connected, so it feels like um, you know a, a regular metropolitan city, but at the same time. It still feels like you're living in Southeast Asia, which is really cool. It has done an amazing job of, one, becoming this just bustling, beautiful, cosmopolitan paradise. I mean, it's uh, – the skyline was not here 25 years ago. So all the buildings that they've built are just amazing. So now it almost rivals Hong Kong or New York, and, and years ago they didn't have that. So in terms of the city planning, it's just phenomenal what they've done, but also – like you said, they've kept the kind of original cultural vibe Absolutely. to the city, which is pretty amazing. So you have different neighborhoods that you can live in. So there is the, I guess the main artery of Bangkok is the SkyTrain. So we call it the BTS. And this is a, uh, I guess what they would consider to be high speed um, transportation rail system that goes right through the heart of Bangkok. So a lot of the neighborhoods that I would talk about are, um, kind of populated around the sky train so you will have pockets of um, bangkok that will feel very thai so they will be further out on the bts sky train but you can still get to the heart of bangkok where all the malls are or perhaps where all the the business areas are within i don't know 20 minutes and obviously with it being in southeast asia it's still really cheap so you can go way out into the areas that are super thai you get amazing street food you'll see very few tourists um, and then you can, within 20 minutes, you can be in, say, the Japanese area, which is more expensive, and it has a lot of Western restaurants, um, and obviously Japanese restaurants. 20 minutes later, you can be in the tourist center, um, where you'll see all the malls, and so it's very accessible. Yeah, it is. It's interesting. Have, have you been to Dubai? I haven't, no. So what's interesting is Dubai and Bangkok have almost the exact same developmental model. So what they did is they built a, a, a nice train line, an elevated train, mm. and then along the train they built a bunch of shopping malls yeah. and condos, and they built a, a world-class airport mm -hmm. and made it a hub for travel to other areas. Yeah. And even though – you know, Dubai and Bangkok are such, they're so different culturally. It's quite interesting to see that economically they're, they're kind of thriving on the same model. They get lots of international travel. Yeah. They have a lot of things for tourists to do when they go there. They get a lot of people now that want to retire or maybe live there. Yeah. The more people that I speak to about that, um, it, they're saying the same thing. Bangkok is almost the center of Southeast Asia. You can get pretty much anywhere in the world, um, on a long haul flight. So you can fly to the UK directly from Bangkok which is insane. You don't have to stop anywhere. Um, if you want to go to Vietnam from somewhere in the West, you have to stop in Bangkok for the most part. There are very few direct flights. Um, and you can get to the likes of Japan and China within just five or six hours. 